Welcome to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint from Zero to Hero, module 2.10 device tag overview. On this module, first I want to cover the basics, why device tag can be very useful when you are deploying Defender for Endpoint, and then the five different methods how to deploy tags. Some of them are pretty much simple enough, some of them more complex but more dynamic that will help you on your day to day. And then finally, how to use device tag and a quick demo to put all together. Anyway, let's dive into it. You can use device tags to logically group devices together. That will give you the benefit as I did in here. I created a tag and a device group for all my Windows 10 devices, and then another tag and another device group to represent my Windows Server. When I'm working now and I want to see only what's happening with my Windows 10, I can easily filter by that. Uh, when I'm getting reports, for example, from the antivirus or reports from the threat and vulnerabilities, same story. I can get reports specifically based on my Windows 10 or Windows Server 2016. Some configurations, for example, the IOCs or the indicators of compromise, if I'm using them to block URLs or IP addresses or files, same story. I can target only Windows 10 or Windows 2016 or whatever is the, the, the tag you have created. There are multiple ways you can deploy device tags. I have tested and I've been using all of them. The first one using the security portal, far away is the easiest one. Just go to the security portal, select the device and then add whatever the tag you want. The only problem you need to do that device by device. The second option is you can add a registry key as I have in here. I'm adding the, the win-server to tag my only Windows servers. The next option is using the Intune via Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And then there is a specific command you need to use in order to push the tag you want. I've been using quite a lot lately the Logic Apps. This is really interesting. What, what we do is we create uh, advanced hunting, basically to find the devices we want to apply the tag. And then when we find the devices, I have in here the command to apply the tag I want. Please check the video description below to find all the links for my additional videos where, you, where I show all the steps to do that. The last one, to be honest, I use in the past, but is far away the most complex one, using API in a complex enough PowerShell script. And then on top of that, I need to build um, advanced hunting. And then from there, uh, same story, I using the advanced hunting, I find the devices and then the PowerShell will add the tag I want. Anyway, to show actually the benefits when using the device tag, let me go now into the portal. First, I want to show how to add a device tag using the portal, and then I will show another, you know, two or three different things the, when it comes to the what are the benefits when using the device tag. Anyway, let's dive into it. Let me just go quick, uh, quickly here. If you are kind of new, into the, the whole Defender for Endpoint, make sure you go to the security.microsoft.com. Okay, that's the, 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 the website. And then click here on the left over the devices. I have a couple of devices I have already onboarded. If you are not familiar with the onboarding process, please check my videos where I show all the steps. Okay, now when the devices are in here, I was playing already as I can see, as you can see in here, I have a couple of, of uh, tags already deployed. Okay, tag, and then this device, I've been adding a few tags like Windows 10, here's Windows 10, and then for all my Windows servers, I have the Windows uh, Win uh, servers as a tag. Okay, that's fine. If I want to add, uh, let me see. Yeah, as you can see, the first device doesn't have any tag at the moment. If I want to get things sorted quickly, I can just click on the device. And then after that, here on the top right, I have a bunch of options I can use. And then one of them is uh, to add device tag. As I quickly said before, unfortunately, there is no way for us to select multiple devices and then add the tag, at least, you know, by the time I'm recording this video. If I click in here, those three dots, yeah, that's the place, manage tags. If I click in there, now, whatever the tag I want to add, for example, wind, yeah, let's keep simple. Okay, wind uh, 10, okay, there you go. And then basically just save and close. 
Okay, sometimes it takes a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes actually, to add that tag into the device. But as you can see in here, I got a message already saying the machine tag has been added with no problem. Now, if I go back into the um, devices, I sometimes I need to refresh again, but I should be able to see uh, the first device, Windows 10, 10, is, uh, if I have a good memory. Okay, here, yeah, as you can see, the device tag now has been applied. Okay, test step number one. But if I now from here, I can benefit from the filter. If I click on filter and say, okay, I want to have a look now only on my Windows 10 devices. Yeah, there are multiple options in here, but what I really want, yeah, to find a tag. And then from here, I can now just select Windows 10. By the time I click on apply, and then I will be able to see only my the any device with the Windows 10 tag. As you can see, all of them are in here. And then same story, if I just go quickly in there, let me now remove that Windows 10 tag. And I want to see what's the kind of current status when it comes to all my Windows servers. I have added the, the tag already. If I click in there, same story, click on apply. And then now I should be able to see every single device tagged as win dash servers, as you can see in here. And then now I don't kind of, for the moment, I'm not interested to see anything about Windows 10. I can see from here risk level, exposure level, and so on for my Windows servers. Okay, this is when it comes to the filtering, okay, point of view. Now, very important as well is when I go to settings, let me quickly show two device groups I created. And then after creating the groups, I have the benefit to start taking reports based on the device groups I have created. And when I want to deploy, as I said before, like IOCs, maybe some of the websites I want to block only for servers, some of the files I want to block only for workstations, and then I really need to have the device groups. What I did already under the settings over the endpoints, if I click over device groups, click in here, I think I have only two groups at the moment. Yeah, I have a, a group to represent my Windows 10 and Windows 11 and another group to represent all my Windows servers. How I created that group? Very simple. Just click on add device group. But let me show what I have already done. If I just open, a, uh, open that group, the name here really doesn't matter. The most important is, I wouldn't say the most important, but very important is if I click over next, and then yeah, here's a place where how you can actually find the devices and then group them together. I could do that via device group name. I could do that via domain, but I on my projects, what I've been really using is the tag. And then here's the place where I can select the tag and the tag should start with or end with or be uh, equal and so on. Okay, and then I just want to add uh, as a start with, and then as you can see, win server. Okay, that's great, very simple, by the way. If I click on uh, next, yeah, here I can now, especially if you are creating the group for the first time, I can click on show preview. If I click in there, yeah, there you go. The tag is working and the query that will go after that tag is working as well. Okay, that's good. Okay, job done. Now I have here two groups, one to represent my, let's call workstations and another one for servers. Now the benefit in having that is the following. I'm not going to show all the options, but if I go, let me go to the indicators. Okay, indicators is a very good one. If I click on the indicators, by the way, if you're not familiar, here is the place where we can allow or block file hashes, you know, any file or IP addresses or URLs and so on. If I click here over the URLs and then, yeah, I think I created, yeah, I created already a variation from the facebook.com. I just swapped from O to zeros. And yeah, anyway, same story. If you come in here, you can click on add. But what I really want to show as part of this video is the following. Yeah, here I have the decision if I want to allow that website, I decided to block. But the most important as part of this video is the following. When I'm creating the, the IOCs or the indicators, I have the option to target every single device on my organization. Maybe not, that's not really the case. Or I can come in here, click on a specific 
machine groups, and then I have the option to target, to allow, or to block, as I was saying, any IP address, URL, or file hashes based on device group. For example, I want to block only for Windows servers and not for workstations. Okay, and then click on save and job done. Okay, this is just one little, I would say little, one option where we can benefit from the tags and the device group as well. Another one is the following. In here from the email notification, I have created already an alert rule called new alerts on servers. If I click in there, let me show, let me click on edit. And then what I build in here is the following. Okay, the name really doesn't matter much in here. If I click in next, here's the place. Okay, I want to have my SOC team too, let's say, the guys who look after the servers. I want to notify only them when there are alerts with high severity only on servers on my win servers and for this alert notification i don't want to get the windows 10 windows 11 involved and then i can just save this rule and job done i could create another rule where i'm going to send this email to a different SOC team and the guys who are looking after only the windows 10 and Windows 11 devices. Okay, just another kind of simple, but very, yeah, can be very useful when you are creating all the configuration. Okay, one more. If I go, another example I can give you. If I'm dealing about the threat and vulnerability, if I click in there and then click on the dashboard, now I have a good understanding where my configuration, where my device sits when it comes to the exposure score. And when it comes to my, the, yeah, as you can see in here, my device score as well. But by default now, my exposure score is not really great, is a 30, but is, uh, the analysis in here is coming from every single device, including Windows Server, Linux, and Windows desktops as well. Same story when it comes to my device score, it comes for every single device on my organization. Now what I can do, if I go in here on the top and click on filter by device group, if I click in there, same story. Now let me have a good understanding only about my Windows desktops or my Windows 10 and Windows 11. If I click in there and then click on apply, okay, yeah, now whatever the information I'm getting from here is uh, coming only from the threat and vulnerability about my Windows 10 and Windows 11, thanks to the tag I have deployed to those devices and thanks to the device group I created based on the tag. Okay, these are a few, a few options you can benefit when pushing device tag to different devices. I've been using quite a lot, to be honest. Anyway, this is what I wanted to show on this quick video, device tag overview. If you enjoy it, please give a quick like, subscribe my channel, follow me on LinkedIn and see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.